I stride into the grand ballroom, the sounds of laughter and clinking glasses filling the air. Crystal chandeliers cast a warm glow over the lavish decor, but my heart feels as cold as ice. I'll keep you safe forever, Millie, my husband Joel whispers, his voice trembling with emotion. He pulls my best friend into a tight embrace, and they both radiate happiness. A betrayal so raw it takes my breath away. Millie's family has spared no expense for this charity gala, their wealth on full display. Yet, as her father Richard takes the stage to welcome the guests, the opulence fades into the background. Joel's declaration echoes in my mind, each word a dagger twisting deeper into my heart. I force a smile, stepping forward with feigned composure. Joel and Millie freeze as I approach, their faces drained of color. Without breaking my stride, I pluck the microphone from Richard's hand. Good evening, everyone, I say, my voice steadier than I feel. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Ashton, Joel's wife. Gasps ripple through the crowd as Joel and Millie exchange panicked glances. Richard and Sylvia, Millie's mother, stare at the pair in disbelief, demanding answers with their eyes. What's the meaning of this? Richard bellows, his face flushed with anger. Joel stammers, unable to form a coherent response. Millie remains silent, her gaze fixed on the floor. I think we all know the meaning, I say, my voice cutting through the tension like a knife. But don't worry, I have all the evidence we need. The ballroom falls deathly silent, all eyes fixed on Joel and Millie. They shift uncomfortably, unable to meet anyone's gaze. Well, I prod, my voice dripping with disdain. Aren't you two going to explain yourselves? Joel clears his throat, his Adam's apple bobbing nervously. Ashton, I, we, it's not what it looks like. A derisive laugh escapes my lips. Not what it looks like? You were declaring your undying love for my supposed best friend, Joel. How else am I supposed to interpret that? Millie finally speaks up, her voice trembling. Ashton, please, let us explain. Explain what? I cut her off, my anger boiling over. That you've been sleeping with my husband behind my back? That you've betrayed me in the most despicable way imaginable? Richard and Sylvia gasp, their faces contorted with shock and disgust. Is this true? Richard demands, rounding on Millie and Joel. Have you two been carrying on an affair? Joel hangs his head, unable to meet Richard's furious gaze. Millie, however, lifts her chin defiantly. Yes, it's true, she admits, her voice gaining strength. Joel and I are in love and we're not going to hide it anymore. A collective gasp ripples through the crowd, followed by hushed whispers and murmurs of disbelief. I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all. In love? You two are despicable. You've been lying and sneaking around behind my back for God knows how long. Sylvia steps forward, her lips pursed in a tight line. Millie, how could you do this? To your best friend, no less. Millie shrugs, her eyes cold and empty. Sometimes love just happens, mother. You can't control who you fall for. Love? I spit out the word like venom. This has nothing to do with love. This is about greed and selfishness. You've always been jealous of what Joel and I had, haven't you? Millie, you just couldn't stand to see someone else happy. Millie opens her mouth to respond, but I hold up a hand to silence her. Save it. I'm done listening to your lies. I turn to face the crowd, my gaze sweeping over the shocked faces. The truth is, these two have been carrying on a sordid affair for months, and I have all the proof. I can still vividly recall the day Millie and I became best friends in high school. She was the new girl, shy and awkward, struggling to fit in. I took her under my wing, and we quickly became inseparable. Little did I know that kindness would come back to haunt me years later. After graduation, Millie and I remained close, even after I met and fell in love with Joel. He was charming, successful, and seemed to adore me. We got married straight out of college, much to my mother Vivian's delight. She had always worried about me being too focused on work at her restaurant. At first, Joel was the perfect husband, attentive, loving, and supportive of my dreams. But slowly, things began to change. He started working later nights, claiming he had important client meetings. Our once passionate intimacy dwindled to almost nothing. When I brought up the idea of starting a family, Joel always had an excuse. His career was taking off, we needed to save more money, the timing wasn't right. His evasiveness should have been a red flag, but I was blinded by my love for him. Looking back, the signs were all there. 
the expensive gifts I'd find in his gym bag, the lingering scent of an unfamiliar perfume on his clothes. But Millie assured me I was just being paranoid, that Joel adored me. He's probably just working hard to give you the life you deserve, she'd say with that innocent smile of hers. It wasn't until I stumbled across those receipts that the truth finally hit me. Dozens of charges for luxurious hotel stays, expensive jewelry, all addressed to Millie. My best friend and my husband carrying on an affair right under my nose. The betrayal was almost too much to bear. But I knew I couldn't confront them until I had undeniable proof. So I hired a private investigator and started documenting their every move. The evidence piled up quickly. Photos of them kissing passionately outside upscale restaurants, text messages dripping with desire and longing. Each new piece of information was like a dagger to my heart, but I remained outwardly calm and collected. Finally, after weeks of meticulous planning, I was ready to expose their deceit to the world. My lawyer, Lance, assured me I had more than enough evidence to publicly humiliate them both. This is going to get ugly, he warned me. Are you sure you're ready for that? I took a deep breath and nodded, my resolve unwavering. They brought this on themselves. It's time they faced the consequences of their actions. With the evidence in hand, I knew it was time to take action. Lance had advised me to document every sordid detail of Joel and Millie's affair, leaving no stone unturned. The more proof we have, the better, he had said. We need to bury them under the weight of their own deception. So I enlisted the help of a private investigator, a stone-faced woman named Janice, who had a knack for blending into the background. Together, we followed Joel and Millie's every move, recording their trysts with meticulous detail. It was sickening work, watching the man I had once loved so deeply betray me in the most intimate ways. But I forced myself to remain detached, channeling my hurt into a burning desire for revenge. Janice would trail them to upscale restaurants, where they'd share candlelit dinners and hold hands across the table like lovesick teenagers. Other times, she'd stake out luxurious hotels, documenting their arrivals and departures with time-stamped photos. They're certainly not shy about flaunting their affair, Janice remarked one night as we reviewed the latest batch of surveillance images. I clenched my jaw, anger simmering just below the surface. Good. Let them get cocky. It'll make their downfall that much sweeter. With each passing day, the evidence mounted, incriminating text messages, credit card statements detailing lavish gifts, even grainy video footage of them locked in passionate embraces. It was more than enough to bury them both in a tidal wave of scandal. But I knew I had to be patient, biding my time until the perfect opportunity presented itself. Millie's family was hosting another one of their high-profile charity galas in a few weeks, the same event where Joel had so brazenly declared his love for her. That's it, I told Lance, a vindictive smile spreading across my face. That's where we'll make our move. He nodded slowly, studying the stack of evidence before us. Are you sure about this, Ashton? Once we pull the trigger, there's no going back. I didn't hesitate. They made their choices. Now it's time for them to face the consequences. With the date set, I turned my focus to planning every last detail of my revenge. Joel and Millie thought they could betray me and get away with it. They were about to learn just how wrong they were. With the evidence securely in hand, I turned my attention to planning the perfect revenge. Joel and Millie thought they could betray me and get away with it. They were sorely mistaken. As I pored over the sordid details of their affair, flashes of memory assaulted me. Times when Millie had manipulated me for her own gain, always playing the innocent victim while she stabbed me in the back. Like the time she accidentally spilled red wine all over my white dress at her cousin's wedding, just because the groomsmen had complimented me on how beautiful I looked or when she convinced me to loan her money for a business opportunity, only to blow it all on a lavish vacation with some guy she'd just met. I should have seen the signs then, but I was too blinded by our so-called friendship to recognize her true colors. Well, not anymore. With each incriminating photo, every damning text message, my resolve only strengthened. These two deserved to have their lives torn apart, just as they had so callously destroyed my marriage and our friendship. I knew I had to plan my strike carefully, crafting a scenario that would maximize their humiliation 
while ensuring I remained firmly on the moral high ground. A public shaming was in order, but it had to be executed flawlessly. That's when the idea hit me. Millie's family was hosting another one of their opulent charity galas in a few weeks, an event guaranteed to draw the elite of our social circle. What better stage to expose Joel and Millie's sordid affair than the very place their betrayal had begun? A slow, vindictive smile spread across my face as I envisioned the looks of shock and horror on their faces when the truth was finally laid bare. I could already picture Millie's carefully cultivated facade crumbling to pieces, her false charm and grace shattered in an instant. But I couldn't rely on shock value alone. No, I needed to hit them where it really hurt. Their reputations, their careers, their entire way of life. A good old-fashioned public shaming was the only way to ensure they suffered the consequences of their actions. So I got to work, meticulously planning every last detail, from compiling the most damning pieces of evidence into an incriminating slideshow to discreetly planting an anonymous tip with the local gossip rag, ensuring their downfall would be broadcast far and wide. You're playing a dangerous game, Ashton, Lance cautioned me during one of our strategy sessions. Are you sure you want to go down this road? I met his gaze steadily, unflinching. They made their choices, Lance. Now it's time for them to pay the price. With each passing day, my anticipation grew, like a coiled snake ready to strike. Joel and Millie had no idea what was coming for them, but soon enough, they'd learn the true consequences of betrayal. The night of the charity gala arrived, and I could barely contain my anticipation as I slipped into my sleek black dress. Months of careful planning had led to this moment, and I was determined to savor every second of Joel and Millie's downfall. As I stepped into the opulent ballroom, my gaze immediately found them standing together, laughing and sipping champagne like they didn't have a care in the world. Millie's fake smile was brighter than ever, her arm looped through Joel's in a sickening display of affection. My blood boiled at the sight, but I forced myself to remain calm and collected. Let them enjoy their last few moments of blissful ignorance. It wouldn't last long. The event kicked off with the usual pomp and circumstance, Millie's father taking the stage to deliver a long-winded speech about the importance of charitable giving. I tuned him out, focusing instead on the meticulously prepared slideshow sitting innocently on my tablet. Finally, Richard wrapped up his remarks and introduced the evening's keynote speaker. As the man took the podium, I made my move smoothly slipping behind the curtain and connecting my tablet to the projection system. With a few taps, the ballroom's massive screens flickered to life, displaying the first damning image. A candid shot of Joel and Millie locked in a passionate kiss outside a fancy restaurant. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the crowd as more photos appeared in rapid succession, each one more incriminating than the last. On the stage, the keynote speaker faltered, his words dying on his lips as he realized something was terribly wrong. I stepped out from behind the curtain, a satisfied smile playing across my lips as I took in the scene of utter chaos unfolding before me. Joel and Millie were frozen in horror, their faces drained of color as the shocking evidence of their affair was laid bare for all to see. Text messages filled with lust and longing, credit card statements detailing lavish gifts, even grainy video captures of their trysts at high-end hotels. It was all there, projected in vivid detail for the entire crowd to witness. Millie's parents, Richard and Sylvia, looked like they were about to be sick, their expressions twisted into masks of disgust and betrayal. Around them the once dignified guests erupted into a frenzy of whispers and gasps, their scandalized tones echoing off the vaulted ceilings. As the slideshow cycled through its final few images, I stepped forward, basking in the stunned silence that had fallen over the ballroom. Well, I called out, my voice ringing with contempt. Don't you two have anything to say for yourselves? Joel opened and closed his mouth wordlessly, like a fish gasping for air. Millie, however, found her voice, her eyes blazing with fury. You bitch, she spat, any trace of her false charm evaporating in an instant. How dare you do this to us? A harsh laugh escaped my lips. How dare I? You two were the ones carrying on a sordid affair behind my back. You brought this on yourselves. My gaze shifted to Richard and Sylvia, taking in their devastated expressions. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, I said, my tone softening ever so slightly. 
but they gave me no choice. The truth had to come out. With that, I turned on my heel and strode out of the ballroom, leaving a wake of chaos and shattered reputations in my wake. The cold satisfaction of revenge coursed through my veins. Joel and Millie had finally gotten what they deserved. In the aftermath of my explosive revelation, the fallout was swift and merciless. Joel and Millie found themselves cast out from the very social circles they'd once dominated, their reputations in tatters. I'll never forget the look on Richard's face as he confronted his daughter in the wake of the scandal. His eyes blazed with a fury I'd never seen before, his usual cool composure shattered. How could you, Millie? he shouted, his voice trembling with rage and humiliation. How could you betray your own best friend like this? Millie, for once, was at a loss for words. Her perfectly cultivated mask had cracked, revealing the selfish, deceitful creature lurking beneath. Daddy, I... She stammered, her eyes darting wildly around the room as the weight of her actions finally sank in. I never meant to hurt anyone. Richard let out a harsh, derisive laugh. Never meant to hurt anyone? You carried on an affair with a married man, Millie. You lied and betrayed your closest friend for your own selfish desires. Sylvia stood off to the side, silent tears streaming down her face. The humiliation and shame were etched into every line of her once regal features. As for Joel, he seemed to shrink in on himself, a broken shell of the man he'd once been. The confident, charismatic persona he'd so carefully crafted was gone, replaced by a pathetic, sniveling coward. He tried to approach me in the days that followed, his eyes pleading for forgiveness, for understanding. But I shut him down at every turn, my heart as cold and unyielding as steel. Please, Ashton, he begged, his voice thick with emotion. I made a mistake, a terrible mistake, but I still love you, I swear it. I fixed him with an icy glare, my lips curling into a contemptuous sneer. Love? You don't know the first thing about love, Joel. What you had with Millie was nothing more than a sordid fling built on lies and selfishness. His shoulders slumped in defeat, and for a fleeting moment, I almost felt sorry for him. Almost. The gossip rags, of course, had a field day with the scandal. Tawdry headlines screamed from every checkout counter, breathlessly recounting the sordid details of Joel and Millie's undoing. Wealthy heiress caught in salacious affair, corporate hotshot secret sex life exposed. Overnight, they became the laughingstock of the city, their once enviable social status reduced to a cruel punchline. Joel lost his high-powered job, his employers unwilling to weather the storm of bad publicity. Millie, meanwhile, found herself ostracized from the very circles she'd once ruled with an iron fist, her family's reputation left in tatters. As for me, I reveled in their misery, savoring every ounce of their well-deserved karma. The hurt and betrayal I'd felt seemed like a distant memory, replaced by a sense of vindictive triumph. I'd won. They'd lost everything and not a single part of me felt even the slightest pang of remorse. With Joel and Millie's lives in ruins, it was finally time for me to move on and start anew. The divorce proceedings were swift and brutal, thanks to an ironclad prenuptial agreement that ensured I walked away with a sizable settlement. As I sorted through the paperwork, putting the final nail in the coffin of my failed marriage, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. The weight of Joel's betrayal had been lifted, replaced by a newfound sense of freedom and possibility. You did the right thing, sweetheart, my mother Vivian assured me as we shared a celebratory glass of wine. That snake got exactly what he deserved. I nodded, taking a sip of the rich, full-bodied red. I know, and as much as it hurts, I'm glad it's over. I can finally move on with my life. Vivian reached across the table, giving my hand a gentle squeeze. So, what's next for you? The world is your oyster now, you know? A slow smile spread across my face as an idea began to take shape in my mind. You know, I've always dreamed of opening my own bakery, a cozy little place with fresh-baked treats and strong coffee. Vivian's eyes lit up with excitement. That's perfect. You've always been such a natural in the kitchen. The more I thought about it, the more the idea appealed to me. After years of working in my family's stuffy, high-end restaurant, the thought of running my own laid-back bakery was like a breath of fresh air. With my mind made up, I wasted no time in setting my plan into motion. I used a portion of the settlement money to secure a prime location in a trendy part of town and got to work transforming the space into my vision 
of bakery perfection. The weeks flew by in a whirlwind of painting, baking, and taste testing as I poured every ounce of my energy into making my dream a reality. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the big day arrived. The soft chime of the bell above the door signaled the arrival of my first customer, a wide-eyed young woman who eagerly approached the glass display case. "'What can I get for you today?' I asked, a genuine smile spreading across my face. As she placed her order, I felt a surge of pride and excitement. This was it, the start of my new life, unburdened by the shadows of betrayal and deceit. In the months that followed, my little bakery became a neighborhood staple, drawing in crowds with its tempting array of freshly baked goods and warm, welcoming atmosphere. I'd never been happier, surrounding myself with the simple pleasures of good food and friendly faces. Whenever I felt a twinge of sadness creeping in, I'd remind myself of how far I'd come. I'd survived the ultimate betrayal and emerged stronger, more resilient than ever before. Joel and Millie's actions, as despicable as they were, had ultimately set me free to pursue my true passion. And as I looked around at the bustling bakery filled with laughter and the rich aroma of freshly baked bread, I knew I'd made the right choice. This was my new beginning, and nothing, not even the ghosts of my past, could take that away from me.